It's my pleasure now to introduce next speaker, Dr. Zaid Zahrani, a consultant at the hematology and bone marrow transplant in King Faisal Swiss Hospital, Jeddah, and he's going to talk about the role of stem cell transplant in the era of Nobel therapy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, <clears throat> my talk it will be about the role of stem cell transplantation and CLL in the new targeted therapy, and um, I just want to see if this um, novel agent had changed the, uh, the way of management of CLL comparing to the CML. Now, CML, now we really we consider transplant those patients in, uh, in the era of the targeted therapy. So the allogenic stem cell transplant has been considered the, the treatment choice for those high-risk uh, uh, patients. And the, in 2007, those high-risk the patient has been considered upfront transplant with those patients with deletion 17, TB53 mutation, and those who are refractory to purine analog um, uh, with, or combination therapy. However, the treatment algorithm has been changed over the last decade because the uh, chemotherapy has been replacing, chemoimmunotherapy has been replacing the chemotherapy as we can see in the next few slides. And more recently with the license of the, license of the new novel agent, including the epitinib and venetoclax that changed the paradigm of the management of the high-risk um, CLL. The EBMT statement that was published in 2007 that stating that the um, allosensor transplant is the reasonable choice on those patients with poor risk, and th these are the definition of poor risk. Those, they relapse less than 24 months from the intensive treatment, um, burine and combination, TB53 mutation requiring treatment, or those patient non-responder or early relapse less than 12 months from burine analog. So now my objective is to discuss the available management for those patients with very high risk CLL and how these novel agents have impacted treatment of CLL in improving the outcome for those high risk cytogenetic and high risk features and the impact of novel agent on displacing the chemotherapy and the stem cell transplant in CLL setting. So there are multiple uh, risk models um, for the uh, classification of those patients with high-risk CLL, and this is one of the classifications that is old, a little bit old, that including the, um, the highest risk is the, any disturbance of the TP53 mutation or deletion or the refractory to the uh, fludarapine. Although the, still the unmutated IGH and uh, 11 uh, Q deletion is still one of the highest risk uh, group. Some point about TV53 mutation CLL, it is, has unique characteristic that it is um, either mutated or deleted in 63%, and mutation only in 20%, and deletion in 17%. And you can see um, these uh, mutation or deletion has been accumulated over the time with the disease progression not only with disease progression, but also with the, the use of the therapy that has been used with the, so every time you are being, using therapy, the, the chance that you get 17B deletion is very high. So the first available um, treatment that has been treated, treating the, those has risk patient is the, the uh, FCR, and um, has been tested using the, um, uh, those patients with the 17B deletion and TB53 mutation. And it has been in two studies. It shows clearly those patients would have deletion B 17B and um, TB53 mutation, they had a viral outcome. In MD Anderson study, um, showing those patients they relapse and the first three years, they have poor outcome uh, of 
comparing even if they are receiving the salvage treatment. And they study those patients, they relapse in the first three years, and they found the majority of them, they have 17B deletion. So by looking to the FCR and 17B deletion of high risk, is not anymore the standard of care, so it's, it should it shouldn't be the the um, uh, option for those patients in the in the, in the new era. However, the uh, one of the um, finding that it is the FCR still has some rule on those patients who have uh, mutated IGH um, for uh, those for, for CLL that has been studied in two German and in the nursing group that shows clearly those patients, they are reaching more than 10 years and possibly they are cured with the use of FCR. However, it's not the case in uh, unmutated uh, IGH. So, if we have no rule of immuno chemoimmunotherapy in, in, in highest risk people, what's the alternative treatment for the poor risk patient? We have several options involved in the clinical trials. BTK inhibitors, PCL inhibitors, hydrogen methyl prednisone, rituximab, adalal 7 rituximab, and allergic symptom transplant, and plus others. The first um, study that it shows there is some response with the use of novel agent in those patients with high risk um, uh, patient is the uh, resonate trial, which is comparing the the uh, proteinib versus um, ovatumumab. And it clearly showed the apotinib led to 87% reduction in risk of progression of death compared to the avotumumab. And uh, it clearly doesn't matter what cytogenetic that you have. The, uh, still, the, uh, the, uh, the results in favor with the use of apotinib comparing the avotumumab. Resonate 17, which is addressed specifically those patients with 17B deletion, that's treated with monotherapy, it shows around 65% progression-free survival and around 75% overall survival. However, with the, um, the continuation of the treatment, there are some, um, the progression of disease in the, in the range of around 25% and discontinuation of the treatment around 15% from the toxicity and intolerance. So if we using this therapy for those high risk patients that it should be using indefinitely. Why we are not using it for forever? The first thing, the achievement of CR is low. The duration of response uh, in those category of highest risk, uh, they are shorter. Resistant mutation can develop and it can uh, lead to um, progression of the disease and the uh, long-term adherence issue and the cost. We should be always, we think about the cost. And one of the features that it's been seen in using a protein uh, is the, where using a protein upfront early in the treatment is, has some significant in the overall survival and progression of the survival comparing to use it in the um, second or third or fourth lines. So if we have another drugs that it will be the Venet class approval uh, that has been approved in CLL with deletion P17, and it shows an excellent uh, duration of response and progression-free survival and over survival. Um, the the Murano study, Murano study that it is co also incorporating the uh, use of the, um, the Venet class and um, venetoclast with the other R bindamastir rituximab, it, it includes 17B deletion, and those patients with the high risk features. And those patients with 17B deletion does not matter that they have these high risk features with the use of venetoclast and rituximab. That means this is, agent is very effective in those high risk features. The had clearly there is a um, uh, clear um, progression-free survival and also significant overall survival. And clearly the MRD and peripheral blood, those they attained 
MRT negativity, they continue to have negativity all down the road. Uh, so that's mean durable uh, remission. But this is in a short time. We have to look for the long-term follow-up. What about combination uh, of the uh, novel agent? Clearly those, it's been alluded in the clarity study that the use of venetoclax and the protinib, and it is a small number of, small number of patients that have been high risk, it shows significant um, uh, response on those patients with high risk features, especially with those they went into MRD negativity. Now, I'm coming to the role of transplant and the CLLs in this era of novel agent. If you see the timeline of the um, CLL, there has been um, a growing up of the transplant with introduction of reduced intensity transplant. And then once we had, had the approval of this novel agent, it's the, the curve came down very ra like rapidly. And um, this also the um, sub MTR uh, registry showing that, you know, CLL is being considered as the last disease has to be transplanted in this 2016. And it shows also in this, in this graph. Why that? Because as been mentioned in the previous talks that, you know, majority of the patient, they are um, over 70. They have a lot of comorbidities, port related donor availability, and the um, hysterical the lack of any agent that it will be debulking or to take them for the transplant and the toxicity associated with the immunosuppression and the Graves versus host disease. However, the allergenic stem cell transplant, it work, and it, it shows clearly those, it overcome those high-risk cytogenetic abnormality. And um, um, the toxicity associated with reduced intensity transplant is two things. The first thing is the non-relapse mortality in the range of 20s and extensive chronic GVHD in the rate of 50s. However, I think uh, now with the more um, supportive treatment and the more advanced in the, uh, using the stem cell transplant, this figure is less and less. So the um, EBMT and Rubian Research Committee um, uh, had a statement that they use allergen transplant in high-risk patient. Their RGVL effect and can lead to long-term disease control and potentially cure of subset of patients who undergo as allergen transplant, and hematopoietic stem cell transplant overcome clearly the post those patients with poor prognostic um, impact like uh, fludarapy and resistant and higher cytogenetic like deletion 17. The early mortality with modern uh, RIC is lower than what in the past, and the uh, subsequent proportion of long-term survival continue to suffer from the issue of the chronic GVHD. So what we don't know about novel drug in high-risk CLL. And novel drugs produce a high response rate and clearly shows prolongation of progression-free survival and all our survival in high-risk CLL. The, clearly there is a complete remission, um, sorry, the complete remission is unknown and the curative potential is unlikely. Um, the TB50 mutation retained poor prognostic impact in a large refractory patient treated with um, um, a protonib. The um, efficacy of a protonib or BCL2 in transformed CLL is, is very limited. Novel drug has favorable safety profile and the cost long, long term adherence to the novel drugs. What we, we didn't know about the novel agent in CLL is the the, what's the long-term efficacy? And are there any marker predicting efficacy to use those mitigation for the long-term? And what are the long-term toxicity for using this novel agent? And the optimal duration? And how can patients who relapse while receiving the novel drug be rescued and be taken to the transplant? What is the place of the metabolic transplant with this agent. 
First, we have to choosing the appropriate type and timing of the therapy for individual patient is um, more challenging in, in, than, than before, especially in the prospective randomized trial in combination treatment of selling going. Novel agents are efficacious, well tolerated, had clearly progression free survival in high risk CLL patient with the existing data not mature um, and the follow up is still too short to allow any conclusion about their long term efficacy. Resistant uh, mechanism can emerge in 25%. Um, for patient and discontinue the treatment because of disease transformation or progressive CLL. In contrast, the uh, long-term data from the uh, allogenic stem transplant has been uh, ongoing and almost dec uh, decayed in few centers that this study has shown that transplant is effective and curative options. So because there is no direct comparison between the hematobacin transplant and novel agent and because of the combination data are within clinical trial general evidence based uh, recommendation are still difficult to make so this is the way that I'm looking to the um, treatment those patients with high risk um, uh, CLL if you look to the um, uh, the right side uh, those patients with high risk has been defined by 17B deletion or TB15 methylation. The first line is to go is the proteinib, and for any reason there is a, a proteinib discontinuation due to intolerance or progression, you consider the venetoclax, and you consider patient um, eligibility for the stem cell transplant, and um, uh, uh, based on the um, uh, available donor and how his performance status and uh, how to host age. By this, I can conclude and thank you for your attention.